But today is blank weekend, and uh, maybe in our congregation, I, I saw quite a number of uh, new visitors. You may not know what it's about. And, and some members here, maybe you have heard about it, and we are going to give you more reports of what is blessed weekend and also what, how is it progressing for this year. Now, when I saw them singing just now, you know, it just melted my heart. Because somewhere in the early 2000s, when I first in, you know, met and in contact with these refugee uh, children, was somewhere in Jalan Alo. Jalan Alo, where I saw so many children, so many children, and uh, they can't speak uh, a word of English. But just now, when they presented, you saw how they, you know, they spoke English and how well they, they carry themselves. And this is, the, you know, what God is doing in our midst here. Praise the Lord. Now, I'm going to start uh, a story before I introduce, along the way, I will introduce what Bless is all about. Now, the story goes with this. A 21-year-old music college student took a ship and arrived in Hong Kong to a place called the Wall City. When she arrived there, it was a slum, high-rise slum area and full of drug addicts, gangs, and prostitutes. When she, what she saw was very different from her eyesight. She says that, you know, I love this place, but I hate it. what is happening in this place but I do not want to go to any other place. I will see a city, another city that is ablaze with light. And I dream about this city, that there is no more, no more crying, no more death, and no more pain. There are sick will be healed. Those drug addicts will be set free. The hungry will be filled. I saw families for orphans and homes for the homeless and dignity for those who are lost or who are in shame. Now, she says, I have no idea how to go about it. But with the compassion of Christ that's in her, she's going to show this wall city people one by one to the person who can change it all. And she uses, I will bring them to Jesus. You know, blessed ministry may have not started in such an awesome or dramatic story like this. But blessed ministry was started in 2004 by, you know, by a lady called Maureen here, plus a few of our ladies here. And she had compassion for the poor in the city. And what she did was she went around to collect junk, you know, junk stuff and, uh, or pre-loved items. And she was sell in the M Corp Mall flea market, construction site, Mon Chiara Plaza area. And, you know, after 14 years, after 14 years, blessed today, you know, have, we have six shops that's in Clang Valley. And one of the shops we're selling used furniture and also electronic goods. Now, Maureen may not have lived to see you know, all the progress that the Lord has done. But certainly, her compassion and her faith and the love for the marginalized continue to live on. And that's what we are doing right here. And, uh, you know, so this uh, <clears throat> blessed today, blessed today, we are very privileged and, uh, you know, for all the contributors like you, all the donation, all the support they are given, you know, every year we, we sell these uh, vouchers and uh, these vouchers will be, you can buy for yourself, you can also buy to bless others, but you can also buy and donate it back uh, to give to the Orang As Asli pastors that in West Malaysia that we are supporting, about 35 of them. And also uh, you can bless the Kinosis home uh, workers there or the Myanmar teachers, they're full-time teachers there. So after the service, maybe you can go and uh, pick up some of these uh, uh, 
uh, tickets or vouchers. Now, the other thing is we have also started to bless the urban poor in our, in our community, in our uh, live community center. And through there, we have uh, the next slide will show you that we have blessed the, you know, the old folks there, and they are so happy uh, shopping in our blessed shop. Yeah? So, the acronym for bless is bringing lives through evangelism and social services. Now, bless is one ministry that we tell people that we are, from, we are from the church, we are Christians, and we connect with them, and we introduce Christ to them. And uh, we, you know, it is not like any other ministries, like let's say uh, GG and so forth, that, you know, no mention about Christ. But this is one ministry that it is, you know, on purpose, intentionally, that we bring Christ to the picture. Then we started Bless Cafe in 2006, and you know, again, it was some of the ladies that uh, did some home-cooked food and started to sell in the church. And today, we have so many donations that uh, have, have poured in, uh, uh, you know, right today. Uh, we have every week, without fail, some of the organic food, uh, organic fruits also, organic vegetables that are on sale. And we thank God for Tan Sri and Puan Sri Chan, uh, you know, right from the orchard that they brought here every week, without fail. And uh, we are in for the trip today. If you happen to visit uh, Blast Cafe at fourth floor today, you'll see uh, two rows pig there, yeah, donated by our church members. And uh, just before I came up, I, I bought one. Uh, they call it, and they say the best one, the, uh, the rib part. Yeah? So you may want to uh, buy something or, or to treat yourself or your family. And also, we, every year, without fail, Dorcas uh, from another church, Every event that we have, he says, especially Blessed Weekend, she wants to bless us with bar chang, you know. And this bar chang, she's very generous. She's not stingy, you know. She gives very good uh, ingredient inside one, yeah. So yesterday, we rationed 300. It was sold out. Uh, SMCC, we rationed maybe 200. I don't know whether it's sold out. But here, we have a last 300 yeah, that you can uh, taste these delicacies. And we also have partners from uh, Grand Imperial a restaurant that has given us a tong soy and, uh, and mooncake. So you can give yourself a treat today. It's uh, really a happy day and for you to do some shopping and also to give yourself uh, a treat together with your family, yeah, and after the service. Blessed Cafe would like to also extend the fun of serving together. So if you have any interest to come in and uh, serve together, you can go into this uh, uh, website at tiny.cc slash cafe to register yourself. Now, from this proceed, what do we do with it? Yeah, as you can see, that we support uh, the refugee school uh, in, in, in the Kuala Lumpur. And uh, right now, the, the, the numbers are dwindling. So, every day, we are feeding about 900 children. It used to be 1,002. And uh, we are also supplying volunteer, uh, volunteer teachers and we give their, uh, you know, workbooks for them to, to work on in their studies. And uh, we also give them a spiritual guidance and, and uh, also leadership program. In fact, uh, this, just this year, we had a, a leadership training for them by Leader Romics led by Pastor Victor Wong. So, you know, it's very important that we bless, the, you know, just as what Pastor Michael has mentioned just now. That, you know, the Lord in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 33 says, Let us not mistreat the foreigners that's in our land. Let's treat them as our own, you know. Because the Lord says, when you love yourself, love others too as you love yourself. So, in 2006, we, you know, we supported the Kenosis home. Uh, you know, I can see from the chart, uh, yeah, these are the... Uh, financial support that we are giving to Kinosis Home, which is a rehab center for men, yeah, for men. And 209, at the last day, you can see Rainbow Home, and we started to uh, finance this uh, Rainbow Home that is for women, yeah. So, you know, many lives may have, uh, have passed by this, uh, this home, but uh, we want to thank God that even as we uh, take good care of the hungry and, and, and satisfy those who are in need. The Bible says in Isaiah 58 verse 10 that the darkness around you will turn to brightness of noon. How true it is. You know, all these people, when we start 
to, to, to bring care to them. And uh, they were affected by the evil of drugs. There has no way out. And what happened? When the darkness is turned with new hopes, when Lord Jesus Christ came into their life, that is dream again. And they can, right now, dream of a, a, a good future. So, you know, many lives have come and many lives have gone. But, uh, you know, we treasure each testimony. You know, thousands of people have come to this home and been set free and found a new life in Christ. And I just want to share with you maybe this testimony of this one, uh, these two lives here that has, you know, have known Jesus and we want to celebrate the victory you know, of, of the life that they want to testify. You know, Cap, Philip and Caris, Philip came into the center in 205 and 207 he graduated. In 208, we encouraged him to be staff for one year. Yeah? And 209, uh, Caris came in and she was uh, cleared. And in 2010, you know, Cupid struck and they, they got married. Yeah? And uh, that's where they are happy family now uh, with two boys, uh, Silas and, uh, and Lucas. And this is a very word of Caris that says that it's by God's grace and strength that has set me free from drugs. I am forever grateful to God and I will stay on with him. And Philip, you know, the husband says, I thank God for this, you know, second chance that I can live a productive life. That I can love God, love my wife, love my two children, and also serve the church. Well, Philip today, he's a successful, you know, uh, businessman on his own, having two lorries, uh, do, uh, giving these uh, moving services. Yeah? So, what we are talking about today, all these are started because of one thing, compassion. Now, what is compassion to us? Yeah, what is the meaning of compassion? If you were to look out in the dictionary, it says that, you know, to have compassion means to have pity or to show sympathy or to show kindness. But I believe, you know, what we have heard about the story of these people, compassion is much deeper than that. It's more profound and powerful than just showing love or kindness. You know, when you have Compassion, it says that it just go right into your heart. It just stir in your heart that the love and that compassion of kindness just come into to your heart and you just want to do something. You want to do something and it put into action. That something just kick into you and you could and you just put it into action. Now what is true compassion? Yeah. It is not for show, it's not cosmetic, it's not just to give something to the poor, take some snap and say, wow, my job is done. Yeah? True compassion is more than that, right? True compassion, as we say, it is showing the kindness that, you know, our heart is soft, our, our leg is, you know, stubborn, that we will not move, we will not go until, you know, the work that God has started in us will continue to grow, continue to move on, continue to show love and kindness to them, you know, and uh, finish the cause that God has, you know, has started. And so, that is the co true compassion that God is looking at. You know, missionary says that, you know, you can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. How true is this statement? True compassion. Now, I want you, you know, to invite you to journey with me, to look into this gospel, where how Jesus have compassion and feed the 5,000, and learn kingdom's truth about God's loving compassion character, taken from Mark chapter 14, verse 13 to 20. And the title of the message will be, Bring Them Here to Me. Let's look up to the screen and let's read these verses together. Can we? All the way to the bank and all the way at the balcony. Let us read together. Ready, one, to go. As soon as Jesus heard the news, he left in the boat to a remote area to be alone. But the crowds heard where he was headed and followed on foot from many towns. Jesus saw the huge crowd and he stepped from the boat and he had compassion on them and heal their sick. Now, this, the words that we just read, he says that when Jesus heard uh, the news, what news did Jesus hear? The earlier verse says that, you know, Jesus' own cousin brother, by the name of John the Baptist, was beheaded by Herod. 
Now, as human, Jesus was very human. He must be grieving that his own cousin brother has been killed. And he just wants to be alone, as the word says that Jesus wants to go to a lonely place. Now, his emotion may be troubled. He just wants to stay away from people. You know, this is how we felt, right? When uh, we feel grief, when we feel not well, and we just want to be alone and just want the space for ourselves. But the, but the scripture continues to say that when Jesus came ashore, he saw, he saw the multitudes and he had compassion on them. Now, before Jesus saw the multitudes, he was grieving. He was not feeling good in his emotion. But when Jesus saw the crowd, compassion just filled him. And he just, you know, all the feeling of grief, all the feeling of the emotion that is down, all these are not important anymore. Jesus' compassion just overwhelmed him. And he saw the needs of the crowd. And the Bible says that he had compassion on them. And what did he do? He says he healed the sick. He healed the sick. Now, these sick people were desperate because Jesus was trying to shy away quietly. But they heard that Jesus is going to that place. And many people from everywhere just want to go to Jesus desperately because when they have great expectation on Jesus, and Jesus never failed them. When Jesus met them, Jesus was always willing to give them the touch, the comfort, the healing, and the power just come, and they are satisfied. You know, when I was preparing this message, the Lord spoke to me to do a prophetic act right here. I believe the Lord Jesus Christ is right here standing in the midst of us. And as he look into the crowd here today, he had compassion over us. He had compassion over the situation we are in, over the sicknesses that we bear. And Jesus, the Bible says, he had compassion over you and he wants to heal the sick. So what we are going to do is right now, we want to make this place, yeah, to, re to honor Jesus, to revert Jesus' presence here and no one move about. And just a time to just honor the presence of God that He wants to do something in your life today. The, the Bible just told us that if everyone that comes to Him, desperate for Jesus, expecting Jesus to do something, they know that Jesus will come and the compassion of Jesus will heal them. So this right now, right now, let us stop moving about and if you have a sickness. If you have sickness with you right now, I just want you to stand up where you are. Do not be shy about it because this is your moment. This is God's moment. Just stand where you are. It could be your own sickness. It could be your family that is not well. Your friends is not well. That is, you know, is not here today. But I want you to stand also on behalf of them. So if you have a need. Do not be shy. Honor God and let God come into your life today. And let this prophetic act that God wants to do, you just receive it. In the balcony, just where you are, you just stand up. It's just stand up. Or you just raise your hand. Just raise your hand, right hand. Just raise your hand to the Lord. Just raise your hand. Many people are standing. Many people are raising their hands. Just raise your hand to the Lord. Just raise your hand to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Just have a moment with the Lord. Hallelujah. Let the Lord come by to where you are standing. That is the altar. That is the place where God wants to stand with you. Praise you, Lord. Lord, as you see these people that are standing or the hands that are raised, Lord, we come to you and ask God for your forgiveness for allowing any fear, any guilt, any self-rejection, any self-hatred or unforgiveness in the heart, bitterness, confusion, sin, pride or rebellion that opens the door to any sicknesses that come into the body. 
I renounce all this demonic influence of pollution in the mind right now. We close the door in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you for your love and compassion that fills our heart today. And Lord, heal me according to your word. I break, I break the disease, speak out the disease, speak out whatever they're having. I break that disease, I, br- I rebuke that disease, I cast out the spirit of the, that disease in the name of Jesus right now, right now in Jesus' name, be healed and be gone in Jesus' name. I speak healing, I speak strength into your body right now. In the name of Jesus, let the organs be well, let every part of the body be well, spirit, soul, in Jesus' name. And I declare, Lord, thank you, God, for your love. Thank you, God, for your compassion. Thank you, God, that your power of healing is flowing right now through my life, through my head, through my hands, in the name of Jesus, right now. I thank you, God, for this new health. I thank you, God, for this new life. Hallelujah. And let it flow right now and to bring wellness to my body, my spirit, and my soul. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Let's give God praise. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise. Now, the Bible tells us in Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says that we defeat the enemy, the enemy of sickness, the enemy of destruction by the blood of Jesus and also by the words of your testimony. So, I want you to do something this week. You know, to share just go to the doctor and check that you're fully well and come and write into SIB website and there's a, there's a column say my testimony. Share that testimony to us and we will want to you know, bless the body of Christ. Amen? Praise God. Thank you. Let's, for, let's continue the verses in verse, chapter 14, verse 15 to 17 on the screen again. Let's read it together, the Word of God. That evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a remote place, and it's already getting late. Send the crowds away so that they can go to the villages and buy food for themselves. But Jesus said, that isn't necessary. You feed them. But we have only five loaves of bread and two fish, they answered. Now, what would be the response where there is no compassion at all? Exactly. The disciples, when there is no compassion, what the disciples saw was trouble. What was you know, what the disciples saw was a crowd of people that would not be satisfied and would be angry because, they would be un- because they're hungry. What the disciples saw is problem. And they just want, the best way to solve problem is to send them away. Just go away. Go and find your own, own food. But Jesus says, it isn't necessary to send them away. You feed them. Now, what was Jesus trying to do? Was he oblivious of the situation? Was Jesus not, you know, practical about the situation? Was Jesus asking them for a correct answer? Was Jesus asking them for their wisdom? No. Jesus was trying to draw from the Spirit. Jesus was trying to draw from them. Can you see with your Spirit and not just with your normal eyes? You know, these disciples were with Jesus all this, all this while. He saw Jesus doing so many miracles and uh, they can, you know, they can agree and, and get excited over what Jesus has done. But right now with this huge crowd, oh, they are overwhelmed by the numbers. Oh, Jesus, you cannot do something miraculous over this number, surely, because we have only five loaves and two fish. But Jesus wants to draw from them. He says, can you remember, you know, the first miracle that I did at the canal when they ran out of wine? What happened? I asked them to fill the jar with water and the water turned into wine and not only just wine, but the best wine that they ever had. So Jesus was trying to draw, draw from them. Can you see that? Can you see in your spirit, can you have a little, just believe in me that because I'm here, because I'm Jesus, because I, I say that I, I come from God, I'm a son of God, and because I'm here, 
I can do things that is impossible. I can do all things that is difficult. There is nothing that is impossible to God. So Jesus was trying to draw that from the disciples. In the same way this morning, is Jesus trying to draw something from you to see beyond your physical eyes that you can resonate with Jesus and with the Spirit to see in the spiritual to believe that Jesus can do something in your life, that whatever you are going through, whatever situation, circumstances that you are in, it is never difficult for the Lord. And the Lord is always willing to, you know, willing to do something that will bring you joy and joy to this heart. Amen? That's what Jesus was trying to do this day, this morning, and trying to teach us from the disciples. You know, I was put to test when I first handled this uh, blessed ministry in the early two years. You know, when I went to the refugee school, they have lack of volunteer teachers. Everywhere I go, you know, I said, Pastor, can you give me more teachers? Weekends, we have, we are, you know, we have enough, but the weekdays, because everybody is working, so we don't have enough. And, uh, you know, the other thing is that I saw that the children are studying the primary syllabus, but some has grown, you know, there's this thing on to, to the primary, in fact, they should be in the secondary. So I was concerned, I said, they need to move on. I need to find a solution to that. And the other thing was, you know, one of the principles was, in the hygiene was a big problem. And one of the principles was contracted with the TB. And, uh, you know, we were so concerned for the children of the school. And our voluntary, uh, volunteer teachers stopped, stopped teaching because they are also concerned of their health. We understood that. Yeah. And what happened? I have no, I tried my very best. My best is not good enough. I came to the Lord. I sought the Lord. I said, I have no solution to this. This is a compounding problem, Lord, and I have no solution to that. And I came to Jesus until I, I heard this voice in Matthew chapter 14, verse 18. He says, bring them here to me. The Lord says, bring them here to me. So I brought you the Lord. You know, when, some, when that, I heard that voice, you know, something just lift up in my spirit. The problem is not solved, but I can see with my spiritual eyes that the Lord is going to solve this problem. God is good and God is going to do something that I cannot do and I'm going to bring it to Him. When the Lord asks you to bring to Him, what can you bring to Him? What will you bring to Him? You know, according to the text of the Scripture, I brought to Him my five loaves and two fish. I brought to Him my faith. I brought to Him my thanksgiving for what He has done. He's going to do. So the first point, I brought my five loaves and two fish to him. As the disciples say, how far can these five loaves and two fish go? There are 5,000 men and maybe another 5,000 women and children. All in it could be 10,000 people. Now if you have 500 loaves or 5,000 loaves and 2,000 fishes, do you think it's enough to feed everyone? Do you think that would be enough? You know, our human mind is we must have everything before we start to do, to bless, you know, the work of God. We must have everything in place and then that is the formula of doing, yeah, of doing God's work. But God's formula is different. He says, you give me what you have. You give me the little that you have. And I'm going to multiply it. And I'm going to progress it step by step. And as you go, your faith grew. As you go, you see the power of God in place. As you go, you see people are met, the needs are met at the right time, at the right moment. This is the formula of God. You know, we have a, a cell leader here that shared with me a, a, a testimony. She says that when you know, she shifted to Kuala Lumpur, a family of three, and the husband was the only breadwinner. So the amount of money that the husband brought home, she would prudently budget, budget for household expenses, you know, for food, 
600 ringgit a month, tax and other expenses like the school, ed, uh, the children education. So one day, one of the cell member was stricken with cancer. She has compassion and she wants to do something for this family so that uh, this woman can, can uh, you know, just concentrate on regaining back her health. And she told the Lord, this is a family of five and my family of three. With 600 ringgit budget, Lord, it is not enough. And God, can I use some of the tax money so that I can, you know, have enough to feed eight people? Well, you know, she began to cook for them. But the, the, one more problem that, that came in was she found out that this family only eat uh, organic stuff, organic rice, organic chicken, organic vegetables and fruits. And, you know, the, the, the cost is going to increase so much more, maybe two or three times more. And it really, she says, God, I really need to use the tight money. And at the end, you know, she keep on serving them. And, you know, at the end of the day, that lady went home to the Lord. And when she sat down and when she looked into her expenses, she found that she was able, you know, eight of them was able to eat healthily organic food for this period of time, and every month she only spends 600 ringgit. She says she doesn't know how. Even I asked further, she says, I just do not know how. The Lord multiplied it. And she paid her tithe faithfully. She never defaulted in her tithes because the Lord sees that it is holy. It belongs to Him. And the Lord, you know, did not want her to touch the tithing money. And this, this family... You know, they are blessed and she saw the great miracle. And today, you know, if, you, if I were to introduce you to her, you can check with her. She says, I still do not have an answer for how God multiplied that 600 ringgit to feed eight people with organic food. <clears throat> so the Lord says in Matthew, uh, sorry, in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17, whoever is generous to the poor, he lends to the Lord. And what would the Lord do in, in return? He will repay him for his deeds. Nobody ever becomes poor by giving to the poor. <clears throat> for this woman, for this lady, you know what happened? Her husband had a handsome brace at the end of the year. And, uh, you know, she looked at the amount and it was, you know, the Lord has prepared even in the head of their expenses for next year. That is how the Lord rewards, you know, her. And uh, we praise God. Yeah, for her faith, her faith. You know, some of us will be thinking right now. You know, when I heard that, I was, was thinking, can it be real? Are you serious? You know, with the same amount of money, are you serious? Not touching the tight money? You see? Now, you know, here is something that we have to learn. If any one of us have financial issues in our life, you know, I've learned it in my Christian life all these years, do not, do not, you know, default in your tithing. Tithing belongs to the Lord. Tithing is holy to the Lord. When we tithe, we are obedient to God. And let God give you the blessings to come. Yeah? Let God. So if you have a financial problem, are you tithing well? If not, look into the Word of God and the Lord will teach you and the Lord will bless you back. Now, how did God solve the problem of my lack of volunteer teachers? As I mentioned to you, I brought to the Lord. He says, and I know that God would do something. God brought me to connect with Pastor Michael. And when I met him, met him with uh, Catherine, and you know, we went to the, the school, and we were so happy to see that it is a secondary school, and so that we can uh, also bring some of our primary school who are gradu uh, students who are good and graduated, and, and we can put them, put them there. Secondly, you know, uh, she, she, they asked me that, can I support them with two homes, uh, rental, so that they, because all these are boarding school. So I said, okay, we will support two of the houses, but on one condition. Can you, can you, you know, uh, send your secondary school teach, uh, students to teach in the primary school? There's something new then. There's something very new. And uh, he maybe has started to one or two schools. 
and he agreed. And today I want to tell you what God has done. From REC, 16 senior students is teaching twice a week in 15 community schools today. 12 alumni students are teaching full-time in four refugee schools. Two alumni students are principals of two refugee schools. And this year, the new intakes, they are sending 10 of the new students to teach once a week as part of their teaching internship. All in all, God gave us 40 teachers, you know, to, to teach in the school. All in all, isn't God good? It was not immediate, but it took time. But it is surely God's timing that I brought this to fulfillment. Now, in return, these students were not shortchanged at all. These students have the best of the, the lecturers that come to teach them in secondary schools. They have the UCSI college lecturers that come uh, faithfully every week to teach them. They have the local universities, USM, to come and teach them. They have also visiting lecturers that come from Australia or from America to come and also teach them. And out of the two, you know, the, the students there, out of, out of them, there are two students who were awarded uh, this uh, degree course to pursue in Nottingham uh, University in Samunyin. Isn't God good? Amen? It's so wonderful to see how God progressed from knowing nothing about English to be able right now to see some of them in universities and universities of, of you know, a good private universities in Malaysia. Praise the Lord for that. Amen. Now, secondly, we say bring your faith. Bring your faith. Now, I want to, to you know, focus on the little boy because Matthew uh, Gospel did not talk about who brought, who was the one that gave the five loaves and two fish. But in John's gospel, it gave us more details on that. So let us look into John chapter 6, verse 8. And uh, on the screen, let us read this verse together on the, the story about this, who brought these two five loaves and two fish. Let's read together. Then Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. There is a young boy here with five barley loaves and two fish. But what good is that with this huge crowd? Now, for this boy's involvement, you know, it is it's very important for us to know that God used anyone. It was not a, 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 a doubt that brought this, but it was a child. And in the, you know, in the uh, dimension of how God works in this world today, we find that God can use anyone, any vocation, you know, and uh, any ages, and re uh, regardless of any uh, status of people, God can use you. Do not look to your left or right, but God can use you. Where you are, in the place that God has placed you, God can use you. You know, all you require, like a boy with a faith. You know, the faith of the boy is, he did not, you know, Usually, boy, when, it, when the, some of the boys say, hey, give me, can I share your food? He says, no way, right? No way, you know? And what I'm going to eat if I share it with you? Yeah, for this boy, you find that he was able to surrender everything. She knows that, you know, I share with you, I give it to you, but I will also have my portion back, yeah? He had this trust and was able to surrender everything, and that is faith. You know, in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, that we, that we always quote, he says that, <clears throat> and without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to Him must believe that He exists and that He rewards those who earnestly seek Him. Now, when we have faith in God, it mentioned here that it activates, you know, activates God's heart. It pleases God. And, uh, and when God is pleased, he wants to do something. He wants to act on our behalf when we act out in faith. So this is the verse that it says. That's why when we come to God, let us like the little boy that we are willing God to surrender all that we have or all, yeah, for all that I have. And, uh, and uh, you know, as he released it generously without any second thought, what happened? Jesus commanded, you know, use this as an example again. He says, Anyone who comes to the kingdom of God must have a childlike faith. What is this childlike faith? A faith that has no doubt. A faith that is pure and trusting. 
So this is what God that requires from us. As we bring our faith, we are telling God that God, I come to believe in you without any doubt. I trust in you totally. Yeah, in, in this matter, I'm going to trust in you. I'm going to push in. I'm going to pray and continue to pray until I know God, you will appear because He says, you will reward to those who earnestly seek you. And God will appear. God will, will show up. And all you need is continue to push in, continue to let your ear hear and your heart, you know, your spirit man rise up to hear the voice of God. God wants to speak to you. So in any situation that you're in, I want you to look up, to look up with faith and say, God, I want to have this faith to trust in you totally and let my spirit hear you. Let my, you know, my eyes be able to see you and my ears to be able to listen to you. <clears throat> you know, when I first started this uh, Kenosis uh, Sarawak Emiri, you know, it was started by a message on the pulpit here and uh, that, tr uh, that talks about the drug problem in Sarawak, and especially it, it is devastating the young people. When I heard that, something just, you know, just tucked in my spirit here, and the compassion just well up, at the, and I need to go and find out what is happening there. So I spoke to the Kinosis home in KL, Pastor Richard and Pastor Bob, I says, you know, I invite them to come with me to recce the place and see what is God saying. So we, we landed in Lawas and then we traveled from Lawas to Bakalalan. It was a four hours hard journey. It was a timber logging road and the road was bad, really bad. You know, we were knocked, three hours were at the bank, we were knocking here one, the one another. And uh, by the time we reached Bakalalan, I tell you, we just felt so awful, really so tired, never been so tired before. And we just found out that as if that we had had a very bad massage, you know that crack our bones and uh, knock our heads, you know. And, <clears throat> and what happened is, we survived, we survived. But the four-wheel drive truck, you know, broke down in Bukalaran, you know, and it, could not, it did not survive. So what happened was, when we met up with the church leaders and the elders there, and we told them about the purpose of our trip, you know, they praised God. They said, praise God. You know, he says, he told us that, you know what we have been doing? We have been praying very hard. We have been doing, you know, prayer walk from Lawas to Bakalalan. We have been seeking the Lord. And, uh, and we have, you know, uh, meeting in the churches, but nothing, not, no solution at all. But God sent you. You are really God sent. Wow, we look at them, we were surprised and shocked. Hey, we are here only to recce, you know. We are here... Nothing in our mind, whether to, how to start, where to start, who to start with. All these are big questions in our mind. But I saw something in them. I saw that the faith in them, a few thousand miles ago, the faith in them caused compassion in us for God to act and uh, you know, to fulfill God's purpose and God's will for these people. God heard their prayer. And we talk about it, you know, our, the pastors talk about it, and we say, you know, we heard God, and let us do it. Let us do it. Let us come and start this work. So, so we started. We started with a budget, a small budget. And, uh, and we say to the Lord, I do not know how to, to start because the local people here, who can we work with? And uh, where, where are we going to start? You know, what kind, what kind of place that we are going to, we are, where, where we can get, you know? So we, we send feelers around to, to rent a place. And uh, in fact, we even tell them, you know, you cannot f find uh, anything below 1,005. Get me a haunted house. Get me a deserted house. We will go in and clean it up. And then by the time we leave, we surrender it. It will be well and clean for them. <laughs> wow. That was our faith, you know. But God is good. You know, what did God do? God gave us a place. And uh, it's, a, it's a nice bungalow, as you can see on the picture. A nice bungalow. And that bungalow only rented to us a 1,000 ringgit. And we had a lot of space. The, you know, the, the, the students can uh, do farming there. They, do, they farm their own vegetables and so forth. And, uh, you know, it was such a cozy place. And from that step of faith, 
that we saw how God progressed, we started in 2016. And 2018, right now, we have three homes, yeah? We have three homes, uh, three places right now. And God, it was God that has done it. It started with a step of faith. And when we, when we move one step at a time, we saw how God progressed us on. And today we find that uh, there are you know, many that have, have gone through this program the past two years. And right now we have uh, about 25 students in this, uh, in this place. You know, I was there just uh, recently. And uh, these are the students there. And, you know, the, the many students have come by into this place. Yeah? Many of them, you know, encountered Jesus. Many of them changed because of the encounter with Jesus Christ. And many of them were water baptized right there. When they encountered Jesus, they were water baptized. Give God praise for that. Hallelujah. <laughs> and out of the, the students that graduated earlier, three of them are right now staffing with us. Yeah? They are uh, also going through theological, uh, theological class, plus come a, a, a warden in, in, the, in the center. And uh, the picture will show you that the, uh, there's Pastor Robert and also the wife helping as the caretaker of home. And uh, one of them, we sent them to, send him to vocational school in Miri. Yeah, he continued his study. And there are six of them that, uh, you know, just graduated and, uh, you know, not in uh, school yet because uh, of, of, of the intake. So we are putting them uh, to work for the time being in Miri and also to give them, uh, you know, a, a post, a post care. And, uh, you know, and they are doing fine. They are doing very fine. Now, through these centers that we saw, yeah, that what God has started, we saw families being restored, you know, relationship between a husband and wife being reconciled, you know, and we saw what, you know, what, what God has put in something here is what we, our normal eyes cannot see, but our spiritual eyes can see and is continuing to do, continue to reconcile families, continue to bring home, you know, this restoration to these people that's without hope. That today, because of the faith in Jesus, we saw how God multiplied it and how God, you know, multiplied beyond our expectation. The third point is bring your thanksgiving. Yeah, in John chapter 6, verse 11, it says, Then, let's read together, Then Jesus took the loaves, gave thanks to God, and distributed them to the people. Afterward, He did the same with the fish, and they all ate as much as they wanted. See, when we bring whatever we have, the little we have, Jesus never despised. Jesus did not say, Why five loaves, two fish? Why it only come from the boy? No, Jesus just took it and gave thanks. But when Jesus gave thanks, the Bible tells us something happened, a miracle happened, multiplication happened. Yeah? There are many things in the area of life that, you know, when we're in trouble, we cannot give thanks. We look at the trouble, you know, so big, how to give thanks. Yeah? But the Lord is teaching us here, as He looked to the huge crowd of 10,000, He gave thanks to what He has, what He has received. You know, what is in your hand? The Lord says, give thanks to the Lord and the Lord will multiply it. What is with you right now? Who are with you right now? Give thanks to these people. Give thanks to these people that are beside you, that are encouraging you. Or may, may, they may not know how to encourage, but they are always beside you. Give thanks to these people that are around you. You know, in the same way, I want to declare my thanksgiving to these blessed people here. You know, every volunteers of Bless Shop, I want to say thank you for your devotion. I want to thank God for some of the volunteers here who sit in on Sunday so that my staff can come to, to, have, uh, you know, to go to church services. I want to say thank you. I want to thank God for Bless Cafe, for the volunteers who have served for 11 years from young ladies to young aunties today, from young men to the more mature men today. Thank you, you know, for all your love. I want to thank God for volunteer teachers for your love and compassion that, that taught the children. I want to thank God for all the coordinators that are here and thank God for the principals. Thank God for Michael and the family. I want to thank God for all the college lecturers for their contribution in teaching these children and believing in them. I want to thank God you know, for the Korean pastors that taught these children music and, and choir singing. And, uh, you know, that's why today we can have this beautiful melody choir uh, voices here. I want to thank God, you know, for the founders of uh, Kinosis Home, 
you know, they, they were, you know, they found Jesus. They believed that Jesus who restored them, transformed them, can do the same to those who are uh, desperate today in the society. And I want to thank God for you, the every donor, the, the, you know, the way that you contributed all these years. Thank God for your kindness and, and all your goodness. I want to thank God for the Father in heaven. Blessed ministry is where it is today. It's because... You know, it's because of Jesus' compassion on this ministry. It's because Jesus blessed it and multiplied it, and that's why it progresses. You know, as I give thanks to God, you know, I believe something in the supernatural ha happened. The atmosphere changes. You know, it's good to give thanks, isn't it? You know, something just lifted up from you. So I want to encourage you to give thanks and when you start giving thanks, you're able to see something beyond your natural eyes. And what do I see? I see refugee children knowing God and loving Jesus. In fact, this year, just this year alone, we have 11 children, refugee children, accepting Jesus and giving their life to Jesus, you know. And I see them believing in Jesus and taking up leadership role in church and in their school. I see the children speaking English and confident and rising up to teach other younger children. I see schools being, you know, blessed with proper hygiene today. And I see children are well fed today. And I see hope in these ones down and out people that nobody cares. But today, today there's hope in them. And I saw those that out in the five-foot way today, you know, they do not need to live in shame anymore. They have the dignity to come and be restored. And I see family relationship restored and bright future of hope beaming to their lives again. And once again, there is hope. Wow, when you start giving thanks in whatever situation it is, this will happen. You will see something new at the horizon. You will see God is interested in what, you know, what you're doing, in where you are, and He wants to partner with you and be part of you. In closing, let's look at John chapter 6, verse 12 to 13 that says, After everyone was full, Jesus took His disciples, gathered the leftovers, that nothing is wasted. So they picked up the, play, the pieces and filled 12 baskets filled with scraps left by the people. You see, when God bless, it says here, God always gives us the best in return. Whatever we can bring to Jesus today, my friends, whatever, you know, your compassion, your worries, anxiety, your situation, just bring to Jesus and the Lord will see to it and will bring you through and, and you will have an encounter with Jesus and the Lord will bless you and multiply it, the blessings beyond your man in imagination. The boy just lent Jesus five loaves and two fishes. But what God gave him in return? Twelve baskets full of leftovers. God is waiting. Yeah, God is waiting for you. He won, when he bless, he bless you out of the song. And I believe God wants to draw our compassion today. Wants to bring us to the right perspective of where we are. Who God is in our life. That he wants to draw out from you a right spirit a right compassion, that you're able to see with His eyes and not with colored eyes, that you're able to have the heart that He wants to bless others through you. And I believe that if every one of us just do our small role, revival is going to happen soon in your place, in this church. Amen? Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 5, verse 16 says, In the same way, let your light so shine that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. You know, majority of the people of this country may not believe in what you believe, but they will agree with what they see the good works you are doing. And we do not know, maybe God is doing something in our country with the new Malaysia, not only giving us a new garment, a new hope for our generation, a new hope for our future. But God certainly wants to do something through His people, through you, through the churches that can the others see God through you. That when you shine the light to, G, to others, what do they see? Can they see the compassion of Christ? 
can they see it translated to the good works that you're doing? That they want to be part of what you are doing. That they can come to glorify the God that you believe in. Amen. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Let us just take a moment to ponder what is God speaking to you today? Is God stirring in your heart to have compassion? Is God stirring your heart to have a different spirit to see things in a different perspective? I believe God wants to meet you right where you are to experience Him, to encounter Him, that He can, He can show you how He can multiply your life into many blessings to come. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's radiant smile always shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn His face towards you and grant you His peace and everlasting joy. Go in this peace, go in this joy, and let your light so shine for Jesus that others can see your good works and glorify our Father in heaven. Amen. Thank you.